Hi everybody and welcome to the Truck King YouTube channel. Today we are taking a look at this beast right here. That's the 2021 Chevy Tahoe RST. Now this all new redesigned fifth generation Tahoe really has more of everything. More engine options, more passenger space, more technology and more trim levels and I want to put it all to the test. So in this video we'll crawl all over the Tahoe and look at all of those new features and because this is Truck King you know we're going to put it to work. We're going to hook up a 7,000 pound trailer and see exactly how this new SUV hauls some weight. looking at here is the standard power plant under the hood of the RST. That's a 5.3 liter V8 making 355 horsepower and 383 pound feet of torque. Now the two gas engines for the Tahoe, the 5.3 V8 and the 6.2 V8, they remain unchanged but there is a new power plant available here that is of course the 3 liter Duramax diesel, all of which are hooked into a new 10 speed automatic. So. Looking at this RST model, the thing that really stands out uh, is the front end. All of these Tahoes have unique grills. On the RST, this is supposed to be the street truck. This is supposed to be the cool city truck. You get a unique fascia and grill to match. Although I honestly think the biggest sort of feature with the styling is down here. That is a set of standard 22 inch wheels, a massive set of wheels that you're getting on this RST. And these only come on the RST and on the high country. So you got get one of those two trims to get them. Now moving back, looking at the Tahoe sort of overall styling wise, it's definitely a little bit more evolution than revolution. You take one quick glance and right away you know that this thing is a Tahoe. Now out back here, first I have to show you a feature that most Tahoe owners love. It is of course this glass that opens up allowing you to reach in and access your cargo area. Now this is a powered hatch here, we can open her up and I can show you how all of these seats fold down because the Tahoe in this generation is really about more space for people and cargo. So right now we have all the seats folded down flat but I can show you here using just a couple buttons at the rear end you're able to lay all your seats down flat you can even flip that second row forward so you really do get um, some pretty great functionality at the rear end of your Tahoe. This is the new push button transmission here in the Tahoe and so far I gotta say I'm a fan of it. I think it really looks nice, doesn't take up much space, gets rid of the big column shift. I do like the column shift on the pickup trucks I will admit to um, but I have real no issue with this push button and it's funny I call, they call it a push button but it's actually more of a pull button. And I can't forget to mention this L button, put it down into L and that allows you then to control your gears plus or minus. You can see it up in there. And that is appreciated, especially for when you're towing to have that control. Although honestly, it's a bit annoying that the plus and minus are up here on the dash. It would have been a lot nicer on the steering wheel. We have to take a second to talk about the all new interior up here in the SUVs. Now, this is in the Tahoe, Suburban, and the Yukon, and you know what, GM really paid attention to detail up here, that's what I noticed. There's a lot of different materials that are not in the trucks. Uh, you can see there's this really soft padded material, there's leather, nice red stitching, plus this chrome. It's not one big sheet of black plastic like it is in the pickups, which has always been my complaint. Um, now, a couple other things. One of the coolest ones has to be this center console. So it opens up like a standard center console. It's not that deep, but there's a reason for that. Because of this, the entire console actually slides back like that. And this allows a few different things. It gives you all of this space up here for the front seat passengers. It gives you this nice little front cubby. But then when you're in the back, 
it actually puts those cup holders right by your knee and gives you better access to the HVAC control. So this is helping the rear seat and the front seat passengers. Plus, once you move it back, this front section still pulls forward so you have a comfy armrest. This is a pretty slick setup down here. I like it. Here's another neat little detail on the Tahoe. As you walk up to the rear of it, that little Chevy emblem appears down there underneath it. What's that there for? Well, kick your foot at the Chevy emblem and boom, it opens your hatch up. A lot of vehicles have these kick operated hatches, but Chevy puts that light down there on the pavement to show you exactly where to kick. And this one works really, really well. That's a neat little feature. Now let's look at all the camera views here in this Tahoe as I back into our trailer here. So this is the standard view, sort of the top down and then the rear. If you hit this button, you get the front camera. There goes dad on the ATV. <laughs> if you hit this button, you get that front top down. And then there's your rear top down moving along. You get their side view. So that's actually the side view looking backwards. And then there's the side view on your front wheel. You can see the front wheel moving there. Uh, what do we have next? Here's your hitch up view, so you can really get in close to see your hitch. Now this button is going to turn on and off your dynamic guidelines over here. So there really are a lot of views on this Tahoe to get used to. And now we will come, let's go with this top down view I guess. Boom! And now we can go ahead and back right in to our trailer here. And then always the nicest view is once you get in really close, you're able to hit that zoom button. And then just for the last few feet, you can use the zoom and drop it right there. So what will the Tahoe tow? Well, luckily GM puts its handy dandy trailering information sticker onto its SUVs as well. Let's open up the back door too so we can see it clearly. And boom, right there you can see that this Tahoe has a payload of 1,608 pounds, pretty dang good, and a conventional tow rating of 8,200 pounds. Before we talk to you about the trailer, I wanna to talk to you about how this Tahoe feels empty because that's what I'm doing right now. And honestly, the suspension changes here, plus that longer wheelbase, it really just equals a much more comfortable ride. This thing is absolutely just floating down the road. Suspension is very good over rough, uneven, and broken pavement. Um, when you had the rear axle in the back, this SUV still had a tendency to give you some of that kind of chatter out of your rear end, that stiffness that you sometimes feel in a pickup truck, but that is now entirely gone. And it is worth mentioning that on our RST model we're testing here today, this this is just the standard steel suspension, so we have coilovers all around. This does not have the optional air suspension, but that is something worth knowing that here on the Tahoe you can now get four corner air suspension if you want to. The other thing I've noticed is how little body roll there is. Going through corners, this Tahoe stays remarkably flat for such a big, heavy SUV. And if you think this just is a Silverado with some SUV parts slapped onto it, especially in this generation, that's absolutely not true. In fact, only about 25% of the parts are common between Tahoe and Silverado. And I mean, just consider that the entire rear suspension is totally different from the truck. That means that the frame, although it's the same frame, it has to be modified with uh, different parts to fit here on the SUV. So this is certainly, I think, in the Tahoe's history, probably the most different that it has ever been from the GM half-ton pickup trucks. And that is definitely a good thing. Okay, everybody, zero to 60. And we're ready for the race, hit it. Whoa, good power off the line here in the Tahoe. Really felt good. We're looking for 100 kilometers per hour. And 100. Nice, so that was 16.8 seconds to 100 kilometers an hour. 
pretty comparable to a lot of the V8 pickups we've been testing. But keep in mind, this SUV is definitely heavier. Now you can see how it stacks up on the leaderboard. So, uh, Dad, what are your butt sensors telling you about uh, towing the weight? It's handling it just fine. Um, that little bit of extra wheelbase certainly is helping. And just in general, uh, I mean, this truck has always been a decent tow vehicle, but I'd say now it's just, just that little bit better. It's, it's on par with trucks. Um, I keep trying to feel if the front end is a little floaty. I think I'm, I'm actually imagining it more than it really is because it's been pretty precise. We've been doing several loops here and it feels good. The other uh, the other thing here is the attention that GM is giving to the back seats, mm -hmm. okay? In other words, where you put your kids, uh, where you put your mother-in-law, and the screens back there, okay? You've got connectivity in the truck and you've got outlets everywhere. Nobody in the back is gonna be kicking your seat because they're bored. So of course, the second and third row space in this Tahoe is a really big deal. And it's bigger for 2021, let me show you. So first of all, this second row seat folds down like so. You can grab the strap back here, fold it forward. It really does get right out of the way for you. So let me climb in here. I'll remind you, if it's not obvious, I'm a big dude. I stand at about 6'2", so I'm really testing her. And you know what? It's really nice. The first thing I notice is this indent up here in the roof, which actually really gives you just enough headroom. And uh, I'm not touching at all. Let me, of course, pull this seat down now in front of me. And it is just that easy. And there we go. This is quite a bit of space back here. So let me remind you now, the Tahoe was made about six and a half inches longer overall as a vehicle, but the rear seat legroom here in the third row has been improved by 10 inches. What's better than that, because it's independent suspension now, the floor here is much lower. So the old Tahoe, you kind of felt like your knees were up in your chin. This doesn't have any of that feeling. And honestly, for a big guy, this is a really spacious third row. I could spend a lot of time back here and be comfortable. Now take a look at these amazing rear seat entertainment screens. And boy, doesn't it ever look good. So you can hook up things through HDMIs, mirror things, USB, USB music. And then you can even pull up your navigation. So take a look at that. You can get a map. You can see where you are in the rear. You can even search for an address and then you can go ahead and send that up to the driver. So if I'm back here and I say, I'm hungry, I wanna go to the Riverside Inn. I can go send, and now the request is sent, and you can see it up there. Take a look, Riverside Inn. So now whoever's in the front can say, yes, we're going to Riverside, or no, we're not going to Riverside. That's uh, definitely pretty cool. Now let's go back and see what else we got here. It feels honestly a bit like an airplane system where it's just offering you so much information. Um, Bluetooth headphones, so you can have a set of wireless headphones back here. And then here's all the different things when you go into the setup. And then looking over here to the right, we have the sliding center console. So it's all the way in the back position right now, which means the cup holder is right here at my knee, makes it very easy to access. And it also makes it easy to access all of my different controls down in here. So you're getting your HVAC controls, you're getting heated seats, and then you're also getting a USB port and a USB-C port. So uh, the accommodations back here for the second row passengers are really quite nice. We've, we've already talked about it, but I gotta say one more time. The third row seat is actually usable. It's huge. I fit in there comfortably, and that's saying something. I never fit in the third row. Yeah, well, I'm no smaller, and, and I've spent 20 years laughing at guys who go, oh, it's got a third row seat. I go, yeah, it's got a third row torture chamber, <laughs> but not this one. It's no. great. And the other key, too, is when the third row is actually being used, you still have a respectable amount of storage behind that seat. A lot of Tahoe com owners also complained about how they like the third row, they use it all the time, but when you do use it, you didn't have any space behind. Now they've solved that issue and you know they've really given you both. And that's actually, I guess, sort of maybe the biggest downside or kind of the dirty secret of the Tahoe, if you will. Uh, it's heavier. 
They did not get rid of weight. Every time a redesign comes out these days, all we hear about is lighter, 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 aluminum, aluminum. That didn't happen here because Chevy just couldn't get around the fact that people wanted more space. And you just can't make it bigger without making it heavier, right? If you're thinking about this kind of vehicle, you're thinking about accommodation for a pile of people and your stuff and towing. So if if that means that it's going to weigh a little more, you don't care. That's yeah. fine. I think they I think they did exactly what they were supposed to do. To go over the pricing, I want to quickly show you the build and price tool. So right now we'll do Canadian pricing. So the Tahoe in Canada two-wheel drive, the LS model starts at $59,093 and that is including destination pricing. You can see they added on right there plus that air conditioning charge. Now let's go ahead and build our Tahoe. So of course we have four wheel drive and you will see that the 5.3 V8 is standard in every single trim in Canada except the high country. The high country gets you the 6.2. So we have an RST, let's select it and let's go ahead and build it. A lot of really nice colors available here. Most of them are at cost options. Let's go for the midnight blue metallic. The interior is chosen for you. Now we have the luxury package, brings along a lot of stuff inside. We have the rear media package and we have the max trailering package. I'm happy to see that the trailering package brings the integrated trailer brake controller as it should but that's not always the case. Now check this out. These are the standard 22s, but there's a whole bunch of different 22 inch wheels you can get on your Tahoe. Like that's a ton of wheel choices. Some pretty cool styles there too. Moving on, a couple more mechanical options and exterior options. We did have the large panoramic sunroof. You can get illuminated bow ties, that's pretty cool. Inside, we already have the upgraded infotainment. We did have the power release seats. You've already seen those in action. Um, what else did we have? The power sliding console, absolutely. And keep moving here. Connectivity brings us to the summary. So the Tahoe that we tested that you just saw comes in at a net price of $81,293 Canadian. And here's the US build and price tool. A little bit repetitive, but you can see the different prices. So if you go for a two wheel drive LS model, that's gonna start down here at $50,000. But now we come to the summary. And in the United States, the Tahoe that we tested has a net price of $69,490. And you might be wondering, well, what is the fuel economy? Well, let's go ahead and reset the trip down here. Zero it out. And you can see it right there. We have 72 miles to go on the nav system to return this big monster. So let's return it and then I'll let you know what the fuel economy is once we get there. just pulled into our destination and boom the fuel economy 19 and a half mpg over 72.9 miles really not too bad at all better than the combined epa rating and when you consider that the tahoe just got heavier this year but the fuel economy actually did improve a little bit yeah i think uh, chevy did a decent job in this department as well Well everybody, our day with the Tahoe RST is finished and I think Chevy nailed all of its goals. It made this thing bigger. There's more space for passengers and cargo and more comfortable than ever. And when you hook up a big heavy trailer, it tows respectably. So if you do have a big old family and you wanna pull something, you're not gonna fit in a pickup truck, but you will fit in a Tahoe and I guarantee you, you're gonna have a comfortable time doing it. So everybody, that's it for this video. Why don't you go below, leave us a comment. While you're down there, do not forget to hit like, hit that subscribe button, and then come right back here to Truck King to see what we're testing next. See ya.